And then the most dominant component of the universe is the stuff we call dark energy. 72% of the universe is made up of dark energy. When did we discover dark energy? Uh, 1999 is when it was discovered. There was hints of it in 98, but the first positive, undisputable uh, document, documented discovery of dark energy was 1999. And uh, now we have nine independent observational proofs that uh, dark energy is real and it's a dominant component of the universe. It's like the biggest part of it. The it's the biggest part, and it's also the part that's the most exquisitely fine-tuned or the most exquisitely designed. Yeah. Okay, something we didn't even know existed before, before 10 years ago or something like right, that, right. So in that neighborhood, is one of the most important components. Well, the most spectacular evidence I could give you for the supernatural, superintelligent design within the sciences is dark energy. There's nothing within the sciences that, where we measure any greater uh, fine-tuning design than the cases for dark energy. Okay, come on, come on. Hugh, look, look, look <clears throat> when I look at the human eye, when I look at the, the biology and so on, there's all the reason for me to say there's got to be you know, a supernatural design going into it. Well, I'm this. not saying that there isn't more design in biology than there but, is in astronomy. Okay, 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 I hear you. But in the astrology world, or astronomy world. Yeah, please. Astronomy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> There's a huge difference between the two. But in the astronomy world, the dark energy, the, the intricacy of it, is comparable to maybe something that's uh, incredibly intricate in the in the biological. It's world. the most spectacular, most spectacular design okay. that we can measure. The problem in biology is so much of the design is hidden from view because it's just way too complex. The beauty of astronomy is you're looking at relatively simple systems. And so we can measure the fine tuning or the evidence for the supernatural with great rigor and precision. Whereas often in biology, that can't yet be done because of our lack of technology. Yeah, we're not there yet. We're, we're not there I mean, we've yet. come so far, but compared to where you are in the, in but the by astronomy world. Many orders of magnitude, uh, dark energy gives us the most spectacular design evidence. I mean, it's, if you were to vary. Uh, the dark energy parameter by as little as one part in 10 to the 122, life would not be possible anytime, anywhere in the universe. Now, you, I was reading about this in your book. I mean, the book is fascinating to me. I mean, I, because you're talking about uh, a fleck of paint off a wall. I mean, the, the weight of that. Uh, and, and, and said, if that amount of mass wasn't there in the dark energy area, somehow... Our, it, life wouldn't be possible. I mean, I'm saying... Yeah, how? kind of what we did is we said, now, if there wasn't dark energy, then you, in order to get the universe to expand at the just right rate so that life would be possible, you'd have to fine-tune the mass of the universe by one part in a quadrillion, 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 quadrillion. But with dark energy, it relieves that necessity for fine-tuning the mass of the universe to that degree, but now you're stuck with a fine tuning requirement that's a quadrillion, 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 quadrillion times greater than what we thought we were stuck with, with the mass. <laughs> and that's why I'm saying the most spectacular evidence. And to put this in some point okay, of comparison. Okay, 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 help me understand this. That's I mean, good. you're an engineer. Uh, and so what I did in the book is I said, let's consider the greatest engineering achievement of mankind. And we may debate that a little bit, but I think probably the best example we have today is this amazing gravity wave telescope uh, that was designed by Caltech and MIT uh, physicists and financed by the U.S. taxpayer. And then this machine is so extraordinary, it can make measurements to one part in 10 to the 23. Okay. But that ranks 10 to the 97 times inferior, 10 to the 99 times inferior to the level of design we see in the dark energy term, which tells us that the one that was responsible uh, for fine-tuning that dark energy for the specific benefit of life and human beings in particular, at a minimum, must be 10 to the 99 times more intelligent, more knowledgeable than those Caltech and MIT physicists, and at least that many times better funded than the U.S. Uh, <laughs> government. So. And this is important because my colleagues in astronomy have conceded for some time that the only possible explanation for the universe 
is that there's some transcendent entity, an entity beyond matter, energy, space, and time that brought the universe into existence. Now, we would call that entity God, but they say, well, you know, we're just saying something that transcends space and time. But what this helps us do, this dark energy parameter, the fine-tuning level is so extreme, it forces us to conclude that this entity beyond space and time that created the universe must be a personal being, because only a personal being can manifest the attributes of intellect, knowledge, creativity, and power, and care for the ones he creates. Right, to, to, to that balance, to bring those, all those elements together at the same time takes a human or or a yeah, quality that human being, I mean, in a sense, but a superhuman. Right. And, you know, that's simply one characteristic of the universe. Uh, there's actually 140 other different characteristics of the laws of physics in the universe that likewise must be extraordinarily fine-tuned uh, to make human life possible or its equivalent any time in the universe. Can I go back to sure. this, this dark... Uh, Energy. Energy. And w w you, you, you mentioned about how fine-tuned it has in order for life to exist. H how is dark energy out there so important for me to live? I mean, w w w why, why does that balance, that, that, that critical balance that you talk about, which is 10th and 99th time and whatever that is, uh, w w why, w w what, what makes life possible because of that? and wouldn't be otherwise. Well, dark energy is the dominant component that governs the expansion of the universe. Now, now, why does the universe have to expand for me to have life? Well, if the universe expands too slowly from the cosmic creation event, then gravity will collect all the bits and pieces of matter rather efficiently into black holes and neutron stars. In other words, a universe that expands too slowly will not produce the galaxies and stars we see it will only produce super dense objects like black holes and neutron stars. Now, the density of matter in those neutron stars and black holes is such that molecules are impossible, atoms are impossible, even protons and electrons are impossible. So, of course, life would be impossible. Right, because we need all of that. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Okay. But if you expand the universe too quickly, now gravity is not powerful enough to collect any gas or dust into galaxies and stars. The universe would be nothing but dispersed gas. And if the universe is nothing but dispersed gas, again, life is impossible. In order to get the kinds of stars that are necessary to make life a possibility, and the kinds of planets that are necessary where that life could reside, the expansion rate of the universe must be exquisitely fine-tuned uh, not just over the average, but must be exquisitely fine-tuned at different rates throughout the entire history of the universe, which requires an extraordinary fine-tuning of this dark energy parameter. That's why it's got to be fine-tuned to that incredible degree. Okay, so, so take us through the, the, what, what we perceive or what you... Uh, how would you describe then creation beginning? Because there was a beginning of creation. Right. I mean, what you, I mean, what, what we're saying now is that there's there's been an ongoing expansion of something that started at right. at, a, at a point in time. Right. Very clearly, the time began, and this thing happened, and it's been going on for a lot, a, a billions of years right now. Right. Well, that that's a consensus now in the astronomical community that the universe really does have a beginning a beginning in finite time, 13.7 billion years ago, that the universe started off infinitesimally small and has been continuously expanding uh, from that uh, creation event. Uh, uh, that it's uh, a beginning uh, okay. of space and time itself, that is significant. I mean, many religions talk about the universe having a beginning, uh, but it's God or God's creating within space and time that eternally exists. Yeah, what's unique about the Christian faith is it talks about when God creates the universe, he creates space and time at the moment he creates the universe. And that's something astronomers and physicists now recognize as true, that the beginning of the universe is the beginning of space and time itself. And the universe continuously expands uh, from that cosmic beginning at a highly fine-tuned rate that makes life possible in human life in particular. 